It's rare. Whiskey Friday. And uh, we're gonna drink rare whiskey. Now, whatever it is. <laughs> It's about to do like a beat. I know. <laughs> Whenever we're talking about rare whiskeys, we're not talking about necessarily big brands. Sometimes these are going to very often be whiskeys that are craft without a tremendous amount of distribution, but they deserve to be reviewed and we're going to get in there. And if you happen to be close enough to one of these whiskeys to have them available in your area, you're welcome for the review. Now, this one yes. is a gift from the magnificent bastard, Tom Baker. Tom Baker, you magnificent bastard. Fight. That name sounds vaguely familiar. Okay. I think I've seen him making a phone call in the UK at what some a, point. What a weird thing for you to say. Yeah, that's odd. What a weird thing. I'm not even going to tell you anything about this whiskey yet. I want you to smell it and take a sip because this is First Impression Friday. All right, First Impression. I'm Ameri I mean, this is American whiskey, man. Yeah, but. Yeah. And then I'm getting a really lovely vanilla. Mm-hmm. Vanilla and caramel are the the dominant notes on the nose. There's this weird funk to the end. It's way back there, but it's <coughs> and there's almost like a like a buttery weirdness to it. Almost like a musty, funky Irish butter. All right, what do we got? Take a sip. <laughs> right? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Just Wait. What? Takes a bunch of ninety degree turns. Yeah. So this is Wicked Harvest, bourbon whiskey aged in wine barrels with pistachio nuts. Hold on. I love pistachio nuts. Yeah. I love pistachio nuts. Now go back and see if you can taste and smell the pistachio nuts. I actually really like that whiskey. Going yeah. In, going in blind. Yeah. So this is Jim and Gloria Zion who found who have a uh, winery. And, and they're also uh, pistachio nut farmers, incidentally. Oh. And so he's trying to, he was trying to figure out how do you take a classic bourbon and work it into pistachios. I wonder if he's ever tried his hand at Velk nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the best of the nuts. Well, yeah. Well, it's the, they're the most mighty of the nuts. No, I found out they're from Morro Bay, evidently. The most mighty Which is where of the nuts. Hale, my wife, went to high school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're from Morro Bay, Central Coast, California. Great. That's so super if I go back to Cal, if I go back to Slow, it. I'm going to be like, what up, Jim and Gloria? <laughs> Let's drink some whiskey with pistachio nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a Kentucky bourbon. He sourced a Kentucky bourbon. Okay. Right. And then they infused pistachio nuts and finished it in wine barrels from the winery. Okay. Because the, the I it, I was glad to hear they had some background in creating, you know, some type of drinks. The the wine background, I think, it's not a whiny whiskey. No. But I think their ability to balance some complementary flavors really well together. He like, said oh, he they, worked on this for years. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They dialed this one in. You so can tell. he didn't phone it in. They, for years, they tried various proofs, mm -hmm. various levels of infusion, and they brought samples to friends. Oh, I and just said, found, what do you like? I just found the pistachio. Right? It's at the very, very end. Yeah. And it's the aftertaste. For, no, I would like three or four drinks in. It showed up right on the front. No, for me, it was the aftertaste. Let me see if I can get to it. Yeah. But you have that. You do have that nice yeah. little balance of. It's definitely there. The uh, the caramel, the vanilla, the classic American bourbon type. All right, we're moving on. But, oh, first impression. Oh, you can come back and pour yourself. First impression with the pistachio. You can come back and pour yourself some more whiskey. You need to rinse that glass and dump it out. All right, this one. You're gonna. I'm gonna pour it. Then you're gonna read the note. This is still right. Bourbon, a gift from Jaken Harder. Although, as we had christened him before. Mr. Harder. Mr. Harder, you magnificent bastard. Fight. Because you thought it was funny, his name was Harder. Didn't know. Yeah, okay, I, read the back. I of couldn't it. do the Jake, this Jack and Jachin. Yeah, Jack and Harder and is <laughs> just too much of a setup. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the whiskey. <laughs> I had a note for you on the back. I have taken the Stillerites distillery tour and fully believe they distill and age their own whiskey. Yeah, it seems like it. It has been a while since I tasted it myself, but do remember it having an instant bite. Mm -hmm. uh, pronounced Jaken. Oh, he did. <laughs> he did it for us. <laughs> he said pronounced Jaken phonetically. Yeah. Uh, comma. I'm not a porn star. <laughs> it's pronounced Jaken. Yeah. But since Rex said it, Mr. Harder shall be what he calls me from now on. 
Mr. Harder. Mr. Harder. Yes, thank you very much. So this is a Flat Rock Spirits I'm, Craft Distillery. I'm glad there is this note. I'm trying to get some distance from that nut finish I had on that. This is dramatic on the nose. Brad Measle, Sean Measle, and James Bagford. Mm -hmm. And in Ohio, Ooh. using Ohio grain, making a straight bourbon whiskey. Now this is a cool mm -hmm. thing. Originally, they started with small barrels, 15-gallon right. barrels, mm -hmm. and then uh, started releasing things at two. And then as the distillery got older, they moved to larger and larger barrels okay. and older and older whiskey, Sure. which I think is a really cool uh, direction. Yeah. And now uh, everything is coming out at least five and a half years old. So this is at least five years oh, old in right theory. On. If this is one of the batches we got oh. that they're recently doing, this is at least five years old. For a second, I thought this was just a regular boring bottle. Mm -hmm. There's a cool little, yeah. Custom cut. There's a little, well, I don't know if it's custom, but it's very rare. I've, yeah. I've never seen, it's got like a spiral going around the top part. That's cool as hell, man. I like bottles, anything that's a little bit different. Now you do get the, like the craft beer brewery type of nose with. Yeah, and the. With this, like a cinnamon there. This is weird, but the palate has this weird earthy mulchy note to it that is usually around a sweet bourbon, but in this one is the core of the bourbon. Oh. You see what I mean? This is wet mulch and cinnamon. Yeah. Wet mulch and cinnamon. Yeah, the grain is very strong in this. Yeah. So you know, you're walking around after a rain and there's mm -hmm. the mulch and it's just like uh, it's super humid, starting to evaporate. Some heat coming off it. Now, one thing they did on the website is they said, I thought, well, that's ballsy. It says, how does it taste? Is there a frequently asked question? How does it taste? Their response, how can you really describe taste? <laughs> that's a direct quote. All right. And then followed by, tasting notes are subjective. Yeah, they are. And so they don't even bother. They don't put any tasting notes on their whole website. Okay. It's like, oh. Buy it and find out. Fair enough. <laughs> Buy I, it and find out. I kind of like that. I kind of <laughs> like that response. Yeah. Right. Well, how's it taste? I don't know. Fuck you. Buy it and find right. out. Right. <laughs> It'll cost you, cost you a couple of. Uh, yeah. well, who's on the? Who's couple on? of saw bucks. Couple of saw bucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. We're moving on. Oh yes. Gosh, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. We just we were doing the the first impression. Like we have a whiskey meeting to get to. This is another one from the titan of whiskey, Brendan Kite. Doug. God, that's... That titan, that titan of whiskey. It just blows up because the name is just so powerful. I'm kind of excited about this one. Yeah. So not that long ago, we reviewed this distillery. What's it called? It's called uh, Vikra, if I'm if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Vikram. Vikra from Office. <laughs> Vikra. Where Michael Scott goes and gets a oh, second. He moonlights. Jesus. He moonlights as a call center. And uh, the, uh, the, the Indian gentleman down the row from him in the call center is kicking ass and taking names with his performance. No. And uh, Vikram and, and, and Michael Scott, uh, he, he mooched his lunch. Oh, okay. He mooched his, his delightful lunch that Vikram's, Vikram's wife made him. <laughs> so this is Vigra Story in Minnesota. We tried their uh, their single malt, yeah. and the consensus was it was made in partnership with our friends at Bent Dist uh, Brewing, who okay. made a beer, right? Yeah. And we tried it, and I said, I'm not a fan. This is too beery. And you said, No, 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 no. You're rushing to judgment. Right. There's another more interesting, more complex thing going on here. Yeah. Now this is Emily Vigra. Okay. Uh, getting into the art of blending. Okay. And what she's blending is a bourbon, a rye, and an Isla. Okay. Right? No, the bourbon and the rye, absolutely. You yeah. have me. I find it. It's there. It's beautiful. We got, oh, we got a beautifully developed, like a caramel apple. Yeah, but then there's a then super the rye, perfumey. The spiciness from that, yeah. I would have picked rye. If I was asked, what is this, on the nose, I would have picked rye. So you're right. I, I will put the spiciness from rye, the herbal spiciness mm -hmm. from rye, aromatic, is the top flavor. Mm -hmm. And then in order, you get into those bourbon caramel notes there. But then the, the thing that is throwing me, I'm not finding an mm -mm. ounce of Isla. Oh, it's really, really subtly there at the very, very end of the palate. There's a hint of ashy spice spike. The rye spice is dominant. So this is a rye. So as far as flavor profile goes, this is a rye 
with a little bit of bourbon to round it out, right. and enough Isla that there's an ashy finish that lingers. Oh, there. Oh, so finally. And again, yeah. you have to be looking for it and thinking, finally, oh, there it is. But this isn't, you know, a smoke monster mm -mm. by any stretch of the imagination. But in terms of a really nice, if you looked at this as a beautifully developed and complex rye, I like the this. way this was blended, yeah. really nice. I like it. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little tannic bitter on the aftertaste. It leaves me wanting to take another sip to get rid of the tannic ash note. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the finish makes me go, mmm. But everything up until the finish, it's like, oh, that's round and nice and uh, oh, I like the, oh, it's spicy. It takes a while for the finish to get here. And then it gets really bitter. I don't know, I like the finish. It doesn't get overly bitter for me. And for me, it's too bitter. Yeah. For me, I think it lands just, just nice. For that much complexity to just... Now, this is batch two, by the way, and yeah. I love everything about this bottle. And, yeah. and, and, let's be honest. Yeah. I'm now huge fan of Emily Vikra. Oh yeah. yeah. Because she, uh, more people should be doing this. Blending an and amazing whiskey. Hell yes. Blend interesting shit. Yes. Hell yes. We're ending with the Westland Peat Week from 2016. We're going back in time. Back in time. Do -do 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 -do. Simpler times. Three years. Simpler times. Simpler times. All right. Uh, we just did a Westland a few days ago. Yeah. Okay. But this is the Pete Week. Oh, th this, this is also from Kirk Castro. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do they do like a once a year type of release mm -hmm. that doesn't get a lot of distribution? That's right. Wow. This is a Kirk Castro Magnificent Bastard. Kirk Castro, you magnificent bastard. Fight. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's the beat. I'm in on this one. You do not have to hunt. But it's very sweet, too. Mm -hmm. This is Brooklady peated levels. No, if you if you were going in blind, you are, you're saying scotch all day. You're like, there's no way. Actually, if I had to pick an Isla, this one reminds me of Kulila. I was going to say Kulila. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. All right. But the yeah. older, but the older Kulilas, actually. Okay. Oh, Even see. though there's no way this is 18. Right. But. It reminds me in the nose of some of the older Kalilas. Oh, yeah, do we know how old this nope. is? We don't know? Okay, because it uh, it does smell like it has a decent amount of age in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But that's ashy. I can still taste uh, my memory of the new make that we made down at our distillery with 50% peated and how ashy and smoky even the beer was. I am simultaneously enthralled and furious. Because. Enthralled first. Enthralled because. You, you know this about me and the Westland and the nuttiness and like the coffee nuttiness and everything. I love it. It's one of my favorite notes. Very rarely do you find it in whiskey. And Westland has really dialed in that note. And Rex actually considered job offers leaving us to go work for Westland. Nope. That's not true. <laughs> Nobody's ever ever offered me a job. Ever. Yeah, it's true. You'd be like, uh, not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, uh, no. No. <laughs> Uh, and I also I'm a huge fan of Isla Scotch. Mm -hmm. This, I'm finding the nuttiness. Mm -hmm. I'm finding the smokiness from Isla. You just found your middle ground. No, and but here's my furious. Okay, you're furious. Furious is a strong word. Furious. Furious. They don't make this as a regular, really. No, it's just a, yeah. They do have a peated, but it doesn't taste like this. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we did it. So this, uh, well, uh, let me. Camp, I know. Let me camp out. Look, here. you can camp out. We're gonna end this video, and you're gonna just keep drinking the rest of your whiskey. We don't have to rinse it out because we're at the end of the we the video. So now, put the bottle back, Rex. No, I'm not doing that. Put the bottle back, Rex. Shh. Here's the fight. You steal my drink. <laughs> put the bottle back, Rex. If you fight, then you fight with your friend. Right now. If you steal me, steal over start. Don't make me call Brandon. And if you drink. May you drink with us! <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.